Do you want to know something um, abs- that's going to make you feel absolutely horrendous? Wait. <laughs> Dan loves it though. He, his guys are in prison. That's a shark. Down under. No. I thought we were like absolutely crazy. Well, no, she's ours. Ooh, that sounds like fighting talk. It was hate. You're all the same to James. <laughs> all the gay Australian comics, they're all the same. I don't know if this is oversharing. We are very excited. It's a gay and a non-gay. Woo! I'm James Barr. I'm gay. He's Dan Hudson. And I'm non-gay. Didn't want to assume. Thanks for letting everyone know. Um, and we have an amazing guest on our podcast today. Please welcome Joel Creasy. Hi. Hi. I'm gay. Um, sorry, mum and dad. This is going to be a real problem. <laughs> um, not Good day. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. It, it feels like you're in, in prison at the minute, which I, is interesting because you're. I know. I, it, it, look, my setup. We thought we'd go for like the like the gravel like gravelly tile behind me, but it's um it sort of backfired, <laughs> and um I am in prison. But isn't that what you guys call us? Um, anyway, a, a, a prison down here in Australia. Oh, don't so. start that, babes. <laughs> don't do all that shit. We're not here for that. Dan loves it though. He, he's glad you're in prison. Yeah, I mean, talking of prison, because you're you're currently in prison in Neighbours, right? Your character is in prison. <laughs> Nick Allsop, the gay stalker, who then became the the, um, the local wedding planner, um, and, and he, um, he the, the the most poor loser character ever uh, turned out to be some like top like top dog money swindling um, money launderer. So and he's in prison. So poor Nick. Very versatile. Very versatile character. <laughs> Very versatile. <laughs> are, are you are you planning on coming out of prison? Is the the, the character or yeah, is it his neighbours done? Well I played him very straight. So, um, yes, I think he will come out in prison in the showers. Um, and <laughs> I don't know. Who knows if they'll ask me back. I, I truly think I ended up going in and saying to the writers, have I offended somebody? Because this character is getting worse and worse by the minute. <laughs> um, I wore a lot of pastel because he was because he's gay. Um, Obviously. Of, of course, he has to wear pastel. And then they'd always, like, write unnecessary backstory for me. Like, um, oh, I caught the bus to town and I'm I'm staying in the backpackers. I'm like, why am I a poor money launderer? Like, <laughs> right. So you must be getting very excited for Eurovision right now. And that's why we're chatting today, because you obviously host Eurovision down under. Yes. You, oh, by the way, do you think I've got a good Australian accent? Because yeah. I think I'm pretty down good. Again? Down under. <laughs> It's maybe too much. What do you think? Yeah, it's it's okay. We like to really um, elongate our vowels. So I always say to people, vowels. Um, if it's uh, we, you know, we have. Um, I'm from Perth in Western Australia, so um, it's which was voted the shark attack. Well, I don't think it's a vote. I think it's just statistics. The shark attack capital of the world. Um, so if it's a, I always say to people, if it's a, if it's just a shark, it's a shark. But if it's a big shark, we say that's a shark. <laughs> we just love we love our vowels. How do you say Eurovision? We well, we say uh, "Good Morning Australia" instead of "Good Evening Europe" and um, and Euro, Eurovision. Eurovision. So like no Eurovision. extended vowels. Eurovision. In- right. Oh, I'm a bit. Thank you. <laughs> as are you. <laughs> um, who are you excited about seeing in Malmo? I'm excited about seeing your entry. Um, you really stepped it up. UK. Thank you. And I think Ollie's going to be very exciting. Um, but. I don't normally like last year, for example. I um, I was all aboard the Lorraine train or the Lorraine, as we'd say in Australia. Um, and I was like, no, 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 no. I don't like. I don't like this. You know, cha cha cha. Let's. This is. A, it's got to be Lorraine. But I think this year I'm going for Croatia, really? which is very unlike me. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's. I'm so happy that you're excited about Ollie. I spoke to Ryland this week, and he was talking about the staging being pretty amazing. But obviously, he can't say anything yet. Right. So maybe we're going to get a surprise win this year. Maybe the UK will finally pull it out of the bag. I, what does Australia think? I think. Well, we. I mean, we we, we love we love the UK. Um, we love any country that'll um vote well for us. Um, and uh, yeah, we like. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I mean, I've been a fan of Ollie's for a long time. I think the song's great. Um, and I think the UK are in with a real fighting chance. But then, you know, Sw- Switzerland are very popular. They haven't won it for a while. So is it going to be Switzerland's year? I don't know. It could be. When do you land in Europe? Because I'm hosting a big party called Malmö Hagen in Copenhagen. Hang on, let me uh, check the, my diary. The Saturday before. Australia are confirmed to be performing. It's going to be their first pre-party performance for Australia, which is so exciting. Oh, we are buzzing. I, I land on the Sunday 
um, leading into Eurovision. Um, you can't come, man. <laughs> can't come? No, it's on the Saturday. No. What if I swap my I'm car? gutted. Electric Fields Maybe are so device. incredible live. They are yeah. they're just so... Like they've really in the last few years blown up in Australia, and um, Ryland might be banging on about staging for the UK, but let me assure you that Australia, we are going to bring some epic staging this year. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that sounds like fighting talk. Um, yes. The song's really important <laughs> as well, right? Because it's a song that praise Dan will be back in a minute. By yeah, the way. just, just uh, yeah, this is Dan, it was so nice to meet you. We're in the gay section of the podcast. Yeah. We'll transfer to the non-gay section again in a second. Um, <laughs> so. Electric Fields praises Aboriginal culture, right? Can yes. you tell us a bit more about what the song is is giving? I think it's um it's it's very quintessentially Electric Fields. Um, Zachariah's voice is just incredible, and you know it's like Eurovision Week is a real marathon. That's why I totally understand when countries enter music theatre acts who are used to doing eight shows a week. Um, but I know the staging is going to be um quite an ode to um uh their their heritage and um and Zachariah's heritage and um look they don't let, they don't tell me a whole heap our delegation because I am a bit loose a bit loose lipped <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably find out when everyone else finds out <laughs> what's the vibe like when people are watching in australia because as you just kind of alluded to it's like it's in the morning right so over here it's a, like a party is it a party at like breakfast time yes. in, in australia it's um 5 a.m it starts here and a lot of um a lot of the you'll be shocked to hear this the gay clubs um host <laughs> eurovision viewing parties i even hosted eurovision viewing parties before i was the commentator um and it goes off so some people either stay up all night uh, some people get up early and have breakfast. Um, we get a lot, a lot of Vegemite on toast pictures coming through because we are a cliche Australia. And um, and then we re-air it in the evening And because um, Miff and I have been doing it for a while um, that a lot of people play, um, we call it bingo, but it's really a drinking game. And uh, people just see uh, how many Real Housewives references I can get into um, a broadcast. <laughs> um, how many times Miff can get the voting wrong. Um, so, yeah, we're a dream team. I think we need to get the Countess to enter Eurovision for one of us. Like UK or Oz. <laughs> like the Countess Luan would just be so great. Chic say la vie at Eurovision. Come through. Oh, my God. Come through, Countess Luan. <laughs> I I would love because we remember America did their didn't they do like a, they tried yeah to do like oh, it was so and, shit though I yeah, know I didn't really even bad. I didn't even watch it but I know Macy Gray was involved somewhere along the line <laughs> right <laughs> Kelly Clarkson pre Ozempic was hosting um... <laughs> she like is it just me or does Kelly Clarkson like to sing because I've um I've watched her show and she sings like she sings at the end of every show it's it's fabulous it's, it's fabulous and also I um. Have I uh, do um, radio in Australia, and um, and I am officially we've decided the um, Australia's most reluctant Kelly Clarkson fan because somehow I've been to every single one of Kelly Clarkson's Australian tours, and that, that's that's clocking up to about six now. And like I like Kelly yeah. Clarkson, but it's just she's not in my like top ten or anything. Like I, I just don't know why I'm like, this mad Kelly Clarkson attendee. <laughs> I do love Kelly Clarkson, to be honest. I, I like Kelly Clarkson. I think her voice is just insane. Who do you, um, who so do you're on the... like, is, who do you want us to enter? Like, is it Kylie Minogue you want? Is it Danny Minogue? Is it Kylie and Danny together? Uh, that's, that's a really hard question. Um, is it Kylie and Danny together? That would be epic, but actually I think I just want... So I've been thinking about this a lot lately, <laughs> genuinely. This, I'm so glad you asked. Um, for me, Kylie is like corporate Minogue and Danny is the people's Minogue. Danny so I fun. think... I want Danny to enter for Eurovision. Yeah, well, I think Danny would be exceptional. Kylie would be, she'd win, and Danny would do really well. <laughs> now, now what am I saying? No, I know exactly. Danny what could you win mean. too. Um, yeah. Well, Danny came to um, Liverpool last year um, and came came along. Um, we might share the same management, and um, and and she came along to the show, and then Danny put up a picture. <laughs> of the Eurovision arena on Twitter a couple of months ago and the gays went mental down here. Yeah, we did. Danny had, Same um, here. Yeah, no. no, no but minutes. why not? Why not, though? Well, Do you think she will? She's she's definitely having attended Eurovision and I have to say the collaboration between UK and Ukraine was the best Eurovision I've probably attended. And... Mm. Um, and 
Hannah Waddingham marry me. Um, Right. Oh, my God. But I think she's really gotten the taste for it after coming last year. So I think... I think with a little bit of massaging, we could get Danny Minogue across the line. Well, if you don't get her, we're stealing her for the UK. No, she's ours. She's ours. Oh no, that's Kylie. Um, You also are on the panel on RuPaul's Drag Race. I really want to know about the lighting. Can you talk me through the lighting? Because the lighting is just so good. Do you want to, okay, do you want to know something um, that's going to make you feel absolutely horrendous? Um, I'm not on the panel of RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, it was Wait. My friend Reese Nicholson is on the panel. Oh, my God. I'm sure you've been on that. <laughs> no, I've never been on the panel. But I'll tell you, so Reese and I, Reese, and, Reese Nicholson and I are best mates. and We, we know both... Reese as well, but I'm so surprised I made that mistake. I'm so sorry. No, They're all the same. Shut <laughs> into... up, Dan. They're all the same to James. <laughs> all the gay Australian comics, are all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, look, Reese and I kind of think we have um, gay uh, gay Australia under lock and key because Reese does uh, Drag Race, I do Eurovision, we both sometimes host Mardi Gras, um, I, I do the Real Housewives reunion down here, so we just we take all the gay gigs. Um, but when Reese, <laughs> Reese and I were very um, open to each other about the discussion that RuPaul's Drag Race was, you know, potentially happening, and um, and the day I found out it went to Reese. Um, I also had, I don't know if this is oversharing, but I'd also gone for, do you know, done the right thing and gone for an SDI test uh, a couple of days before. <laughs> just, and I, my doctor called and um, a few hours after finding I didn't, finding out I didn't get drag race, I also found out I didn't have chlamydia. And <laughs> like a real lose-lose day for me. <laughs> Swing, swings and roundabouts. I know. Swings and roundabouts. I love a script. I'm actually missing it. I'm actually missing an STI uh, checkup for this interview, so uh, you're welcome. <laughs> but that's, mm-hmm. Hey, here's your reminder. Here's your reminder. Before you're a good idea. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely, definitely. When you when you next speak to Reese, by the way, ask him about us because um, he when we played the Edinburgh Fringe a couple of years ago, we were we basically shared the same sort of backstage area as him, oh, and yeah. I think he thought we. Oh, I God, think yeah. I'd love to know what he actually thinks of us because we got him on 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 the show, but uh, I think he thought we were like absolutely crazy. Well, he would have heard all our arguments backstage. He would have heard <laughs> oh, our bickering, so <laughs> he probably I'll, was I'll, dreading um, it. I'll, I'll I'll give um, Lady Nicholson a call after this, although <laughs> Reese never answers their phone, so it's yeah, it's 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 hard. We did, we just did a big Christmas tour together as well, amazing. Because yeah. um, we yeah. thought, we also think we're the Mariah Careys of Australia, <laughs> so we really mm. we're also got Christmas under lock and key. Great. Well, that is gay. So that is yeah, gay. Eurovision oh, Christmas, very gay. Halloween, all of it. Um, you actually opened for Joan Rivers recently. Can you tell us about how mm. that went down? Please tell me Joan personally reached out. So it was when I first worked for Joan. It was about. 10 years ago and it was one of those random calls that you just hear about in showbiz but you're like they don't really happen like daniel radcliffe wasn't just stopped in a bookshop and was told he looks like harry potter um (laughs) i genuinely got a phone call from jones management and just by pure chance she'd been walking by while someone was clipping together a youtube um like best of my stand-up and she was like here's here (laughs) and um Ah, you are joking no, <laughs> so like, good. Two weeks later, I was in New York opening for Joan Rivers, and I was so nervous. And I was backstage, and um, she said, um, "I'd been in town. I just landed." And she goes, "You're really gay." I was like, "Thank you, I know." And um, she goes, um, "Have you have you seen any Broadway shows yet?" And I was like, "I've been here for one day. I've seen four. And we had the bet. She was the most down to earth, humble, wonderful yeah. human. It was yeah, a real treat to work with her." Um, how do you fit all this stuff in, Joel? Because you're on the radio, you've got Eurovision, you stand up, you're on tour, like just about a million things happening at the same time. How, how do you get all this done in, in a day? Thank you for bringing that up. I, I, I work <laughs> um, I I think I just like going on nice holidays. So I cram as much in as possible. I just did, I just actually finished doing my first musical. I wasn't singing wow. in it, but I was doing the Rocky Horror Show um with Kylie Minogue's ex Jason Donovan um so I just done that and then I'm now I'm doing Melbourne Comedy Festival and you know just rinse and repeat I'm current I'm currently like like down like cognitive control alt deleting all of Rocky Horror out of my head and now uploading all of Eurovision to my head so yeah one thing at a time 
Very similar, though, um, I would say. Um, <laughs> Just as so, Barrett, Exactly, exactly. Do you have, like me here on this podcast, do you have any non-gays in your life? Do you have any important non-gay people, oh as, particularly straight white men? Yeah, a str- a stri- do I have a straight white male in my life? <laughs> that is a great Donovan, great. perhaps. Well, my personal trainer, <laughs> my PT was. I mean, could you be more ochre Australian was up? Um, he is straight, um, as far as I'm aware. And I've look, I've been training with him for a long time, and you probably can't tell, but um, but I've I've, I've given it a crack <laughs> over the years, and and no, and no, luck. <laughs> no luck yet. No, do you oh, think it's important? My, my stage manager at my show, I think, <laughs> I think is straight. I just assume everyone's gay. Yeah, to be honest, I sort of do that as well. Um, but sometimes you do need a non-gay in your life just to give it to you straight, just to tell you what's what. Yes, I did. Well, I, when I did the, I did the very first Australian season of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and we did it in Africa, and um, and I actually made a very different. There was this footballer, uh, like an Australian rules footballer, on. Um, on our season, who's this big burly bloke called Barry Hall, and um, who was famous for kind of like punching people out. And um, we ended up becoming, I think they wanted to pit us against each other, and we ended up becoming like best mates. Um, so, yeah, I guess, he, does he count? <laughs> yeah, I think he counts, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. What about Jason, Jason Donovan? Oh, yeah, Jason, of course. We're friends. Um, I love that you called him Cardi's ex, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I know. Well, at the end of Rocky Horror, when he um, would rip off my like rip away pants and I, I'd be in fishnets and high heels, I really wanted to go like, oh, I feel like Charlene. Um, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> um, and I, I tried, but they just turned my mic off each night. <laughs> Oh my god! Um, so right now you're in Melbourne at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Yeah. Uh, how do we see you live? When are you coming to the UK? I well, I did Edinburgh. Okay, so I did Edinburgh once, and it was just after I had done I'm a Celebrity, and the winner of my season of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here was Freddie Flintoff, the former English right. cricket captain. So. We got on great. I mean, uh, was I furious that he won? Yes. Um, but uh, we spent six weeks eating eyeballs in the jungle together. And then when I came to Edinburgh, I was playing to some pretty small houses. And one night I played to four people, one of them being Freddie Flintoff, who for six weeks in Africa has thought I'm the biggest Australian celebrity comedian to then be one <laughs> of four people in my show while I'm doing material about him. It was one of the <laughs> most moments. Oh, you won't be back be for back a to, while. I'll come then, to London. I, guess. I love, I, I love performing in London. Yeah, please Let's do London. Theater, Soho Theatre, love it. Yeah, great. We'll we'll keep ourselves up to date with your socials so we know when that we're going to do I that. Have, I have a Soho House membership in. that I only have for bragging rights, but it is no use down under. You don't pay for that shit the rest of the year when you're I, not using it. That's I, crazy. You know, the day we went into lockdown in Australia, and uh, I'm in Melbourne, and we, you know, we were the lockdown capital of the world. Um, the day we went in, I looked at my bank statement, and my Soho House annual membership fee had gone out that day. And I was like, awesome, great. But so I had the membership, well, I still do, but mine's on. I actually, I feel very poor right now because I paused it because I'm going to Edinburgh this summer, and I just was like, I can't be wasting no. all this money. Um, but they gave you credit for like Soho Homeware, didn't they? Did you use it? I don't think I got the credit. Maybe the maybe the is. My God, what Soho Homeware? Oh, don't. It's a cult. <laughs> <laughs> they just do candles and like you know bougie sofas and shit. Right. It's it's such a waste. I mean, the whole thing is so wanky, but. I would be lying if I said I, I wasn't a wanker myself. So I love it. <laughs> exactly. It's it's important. It's like having a blue tick. Like you don't need it, but you just and feel then more special. I yeah. actually put mine on pause and then I was in New York and I was like, oh, I can finally use it. And I was like, I t- took some friends. I was like, come along. Like, let's go to Soho House. I'll get us in. I'm a member. And, um, and I hadn't <laughs> taken it off pause. So they turned me away at the door and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, no. God, that is so oh, embarrassing. Right. You were in your Jerry Hallowell moment from Sex and oh, the City. Sorry, Do you, have you seen that scene? Yeah, I've just been to the Soho house. <laughs> we were all <laughs> hoping for a bit of Spice Girls in Liverpool last year, I've got to be honest. Yeah, that was really sad. But but we had heard that Danny or Kylie was in Liverpool and she didn't perform, and that was quite an well, as well. Yeah, there was there were rumors about Kylie. There, but there's always rumors about there's there's rumors about Kylie Minogue every day in melbourne the gays just make them up just to send everyone into like a tears you run into her because she lives in melbourne right? um 
No, I I saw she was just here. She was um she was up in Queensland sipping her Kylie Rose, of course. Um, but I, Danny and I went to the basketball together a couple of weeks ago. Because um, Danny <laughs> oh, wow. loves basketball. Who she's Danny is so funny because she just she's a bit random, and that's what I love about her. And um, yeah, we went to the basketball together because um, she is like the the number one ticket holder for the the Melbourne team or something. So mm. yeah, it, it's, it's wonderful. That, I've never watched basketball. That feels kind of straight to me. So maybe you're well, I don't know. Round. Like is that it is was that straight? Round. Did you understand what was going on? Oh, it was. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So you so understood. They played a lot of. Great. They, it was just Kylie and Danny on um, on remix and me pretending like I knew what was going on and saying things like, goal. <laughs> and I don't think that's correct. Goal. <laughs> um, now, you said before your job at Eurovision is just to flirt with all of the contestants. Is there anyone in particular you'll be flirting with well, this year? Um, maybe I've taken my flirting too far because um, I think, well, I don't know if this is, it's being announced tomorrow. So maybe I'm giving you an exclusive, but Courtney Act is coming over um to do our backstage interviews this year um so miss and i amazing can concentrate on the commentary um and the tv broadcast so was it my flirting the thing is though i end up <laughs> wait you think you've been yeah, sacked but i but i always end up falling in love with <laughs> you'd with be cancelled yeah i've been cancelled from my 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 um my green room pass has been cancelled uh and it's always so glamorous backstage at eurovision what a bummer but, uh, <laughs> i like it's the women I fall in love with. Like, Lenny Ferreira from Cyprus, um, like, I still follow her on Instagram. Oh, my God. She, I just, oh, how can you be that hot and that talented yeah. and that stylish? How and, is your super hot model boyfriend? He's great. He's great. I mean, I mean, I, I'm told he's got a good personality. Um, he is wonderful. <laughs> um, you know, he's a catwalk model, so he does, he works a whole 20 seconds a day. Um, he's, <laughs> he's really out hard. walking the dog right now. In fact, is he? Oh, we'll send our love. How much do you actually see each other? Like, does he does he come with you when you're traveling the world? He's or? coming to Eurovision. Um, he didn't come last. Oh, year, great! Which is a bummer. I think he missed out on such a great year. Um, but no, he, he, yeah, he will never miss out on a um, on a bougie flight to the, to Europe on um, on my dime. <laughs> so he. he, <laughs> he um, is sort of like an unofficial roving reporter and goes to all the parties for us and, and suffers all the hangovers for us. Oh, nice. I'm sure that's true. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for chatting to us today. It's been amazing to catch up. We'll see you in Malmo and come to London soon. Yes, I will. And uh, look, I'm going to sort my flights and I'm going to come to that party and um, I'll, um, I'm, I can do on my own Eleni Ferreira um, Fuego if you like. Oh my god! Yeah, because you perform that. That would Absolutely. be great. Absolutely, I'll, I'll whip my hair back and forth and pop in some sequins and probably, um, <laughs> yeah, in the party. I'm sure early. you've got all the moves to Fuego. What? Mm. Oh god, Fuego has never been like that. Was for me that's just the peak. Right? That's going to be my like, wedding song. I think here. my first dance. Yeah, like all the time, and like not everyone in Australia is into Eurovision or knows Eurovision, but it's certainly blowing up. But yeah. Fuego's a staple. Everyone's like, I love this song. I'm like, you know what's Eurovision? Do you know Fuego, Dan? I, I don't, Dan? but I'm probably, n I'm probably not the right target Oh, market, no, you anyway. are. If you, once you see <laughs> Eleni, you, you are. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Okay, all right. I'll check it out. Um, Joel, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. We'll see you soon. Pleasure. I'll um, yeah, see you in Malmo. See you in Malmo. Bye, babe. I'll be a Malho. <laughs> <laughs> Me too.